Hello YouTube and welcome to another vacuum cleaner review from me, Steve, and today we're going to be talking about another upright cleaner. Uh, this one's made by Electrolux and um, it's one of the uh, only remaining bagged uprights you can get. Um, as I said on previous videos, the bagged uprights now seem to be uh, very rapidly disappearing from this country. I've done reviews on a few others, but um, this is about uh, the only one you can get from Electrolux. Well, it's not called Electrolux now. This is currently known as the uh, Zanussi Airspeed, as far as I know. It's sold on the co-op website and uh, various other places sell it. It's classified as a budget cleaner. So again, one of the very, very few budget bagged up prints that are left. The other one you can get being the Hoover Pure Power, which I've also reviewed on my channel. Uh, this one I've had for a couple of years. I bought this one off eBay. It wasn't brand new. I paid £17 for it, um, second hand. They only cost about £60 to £70 anyway if you buy them brand new, so uh, they're not an expensive cleaner. But this is called the Electrolux Powerlight Pet Lover. It says it's a HEPA filtration machine and uh, it's a 1700 watt, although I believe the Zanussi version of this is 1900 watts. So it's again another one of these machines that's going to be um, banned by the EU in a couple of months time for being too powerful. I don't know what's uh, going to be coming out to replace it with or indeed whether they are going to replace it. This is one of these times when we just don't know. In the next couple of months it will all become clear when the new regulations finally do come in on the 1st of September and we finally do see what the manufacturers are going to bring out to replace this with. But my, um, my opinion of this cleaner is actually a very good machine for uh, the money and I've used this quite a lot upstairs. It's not been a downstairs cleaner, this is what I've used in the bedrooms upstairs and um, I have not been, uh, well you know, it's, it's been an okay cleaner. So. What do we get with this one? First thing you notice about it, it is, as its name suggests, a very light cleaner. You can pick this up very easily. I don't know what the exact weight is without looking at it, but I know it's uh, it's going to be around about, I think, ooh, I'd say it's going to be around about the six kilo mark. It's not, it's, it's not the lightest of machines, but it's not the heaviest of machines. And I think that uh, elderly, senior citizens will be able to cope with this fairly well. If you remove this from the front and when you remove the cable as well, it'd be even lighter. So, let's go down here and see what we get with it. Very striking looking cleaner, this. Uh, very modern looking. It's um, a lot more modern than the Hoover Pure Power. This came out a few years back. I don't know exactly when, but uh, it wasn't in 1997 when the Pure Power came out. <laughs> 17 years old, that one. But uh, this. I think this was the replacement maybe for the boss that they used to have, the filter machine. Um, so it may have come out in about 2009, 2008, 2009, I'm not sure of the exact date. You see uh, a fair few of these going around on eBay now and uh, if you can get one in good condition, I don't think they're a bad cleaner at all. This one has the turbo brush on the top, as I say it says it's a power light pet lover, you can just get the power light on its own. So um, that's there, it has its own dedicated cradle in there. This turbo brush has the riser visor on the front, which uh, is quite unique, so that you can turn it round like so. For using on the uprights on stairs as well, as well as the, the treads. That's supposed to be the idea of that. And again, I have used this an awful lot, and it's a uh, very, very good little turbo brush, that. Noisy, but effective. And that just fits nicely in there. On the back of the cleaner, we turn it round, we get the cable there and we get the dusting brush. Now this dusting brush is covered in dust because I've used it an awful lot. <laughs> it's not the best in the world. The bristles aren't uh, terribly, you know, that it's, they're only, it, it's a cheap brush, it's a plastic brush, but it'll suffice. It does its job. I've seen better and I've seen worse. So that's the dusting brush there. We have the cable and on this machine it is only a short cable as you'd expect from a budget brand. 
it's a uh, six metre cable but it has a very good stowage system on the back there it holds all the cable very well easy to wind up like so the cable enters the machine halfway up here so it's not it's not one of these where it's right down at the bottom so you lose half the cable in running it up the machine before you've even started they do provide a cable hook on the side there that you can hook the cable in I do find it tends to fall out of there in use so I just wrap it around the front of the handle like so like that I do that with a lot of machines where there's a turbo brush on the front holds it out of the way very well but yeah it is only a short cable so you, can, you have to keep switching cables for this that's why I use it upstairs so my upstairs rooms are smaller than all this down here. So I just normally clean my bedroom out, clean the back room. Okay. The hose on this machine is very short. It's not a stretch hose. It comes off easily from there. You should knock that off as well. Put that back on. So it's, it's a fairly cheap quality hose, this is. You have to know how to use it. It doesn't swivel at that end. Well, it does actually. It swivels that end, but it doesn't swivel at this end. If you twist it at this end, all that will happen is it will unscrew and come off. So that is not a swivel hose. The other thing I find about it as well, if you pull it too hard, it does kink here. It kinks very, very easily and cuts off the suction. So again, you know, it's not, um, it's not as good, this hose, as the one on the Pure Power by a long shot because the Pure Power does have a full length stretch hose for your stairs, this doesn't. But it makes up for it in other ways. So as long as you know how to use this hose, and you keep the cleaner around, and you pull it round with you and use it like so, prevent that from kinking here, then it works alright. But otherwise, one of the other things is there's no recoil on it. Because it's not a stretch hose, you won't be put forever, the cleaner won't be pulling after you, unless you're pulling it with you. What I'm saying is there's no, when you cover the end, it doesn't suddenly spring back towards the cleaner like on a Dyson or, or, or these other cleaners with stretch hoses. So that's the hose. You come, it comes with the single tool here, which personally I don't really like very much. That's uh, supposed to be an extended length crevice tool. I would rather have the separate tools, to be quite honest. A separate rod and a separate crevice tool. That, when you plug it in, it suffices. It doesn't drop out the end. You can get down with it, but again, you, if you twist it round, you have to be careful that you don't kink that hose there. So as you can see, that's on this machine, is the weak area there. So, there we go, that's the hose. The turbo tool will fit on the end very easily. It's not one of these machines where you put it on and it drops off every five seconds, like on some cleaners. So that does work reasonably well. dusting brush as well, fits inside the end very easily, like so. Right. So wrap the hose back around here, around its dedicated stowage points. Okay. Like so. Okay, stowage there and there. That fits back on the side. Like so. The ratings plate down here. It says made in PRC. Well, surprise, surprise. Um, it's a model Z2255 FZ. It's um, 1700 watts. It uses ES82 dust bags. Um, EF82 exhaust filter, it says it's HEPA and uh, your belt is the ZE090 serial number 1024 0090 so from that serial number it looks like it was made on the 24th week of 2010 this is uh, just under four years old now this cleaner and one thing I do notice on some of these when they come up on eBay is that people leave them in the sunlight and they go, they go yellow this colour machine it uh, discolours very easily if you leave it out in the light. This is still lovely and white because it's kept in a dark room. 
it just shows the difference it makes by keeping these in dark cupboards. They look better for longer. Okay, on the side here, you've got your on and off switch there. I shall leave that cable to unwrap the thing and plug it in a bit later. On the side you've got that and this is where the bag is inside here, so it's just to lift you pull it off, like so. Reveals there is your bag, which on this machine at the moment I'm using the micro filter, microfiber bags. It's the inside of your back door there. It's ABS, so I think um, I'd imagine over time when this gets a lot older it'll go brittle. As with most cleaners that are made with ABS, they're all right when they're new, but uh, they do suffer when they get older. So, the bag, it's not the biggest of bags. I'd have said this is maybe three litres, three and a half litres capacity there. Underneath the bag, you've got your pre-motor filter there. That just slots in here. And there are devils to get back in, to be quite honest now, I've pulled it out. but. Uh, Let's see if we can get this in. It will slide in, there we go. As with all backed up rights, that pre-motor filter is only there just to protect against any breakages of the bag, to stop large particles of debris getting into the motor's fan, where they can do damage. So that's that. Underneath here, what's the, yeah, this is the filter, the exhaust filter. Now, that is not how it's supposed to be, I'll tell you that now. I've got another one of these upstairs that's brand new. But when I did have this, when I bought it from the lady, the, um, the exhaust filter was rather black, so what I did, I just pulled all the filter media out of it and put a uh, Miele cleaner filter inside there instead to absorb the exhaust dust. That would have had a paper pleated filter in. Now I tried to see if it was washable, which is why, it, <laughs> which is why that's happened, because it's not washable. All I did, it got wet, and all I did, paper went to mush, and it was ruined. So I just had to pull all the paper out and put another bit of my. That's a super air clean filter from a Miele in there. But you can buy these, as I say, they're only a few pounds. I've got another one upstairs, so that'll be going in it eventually. That goes in there. Works just as fine. Just work, works all right like that. So there we go. The bags. I'll just uh, lean over here. These are the bags. You can buy these from most places. Buy spares, buy dust bags. Another recommendation for them again there. They are ES82 type. And then the S there means they're synthetic bags. You get four bags in a box and they're about six pound. So they're not as expensive as Miele bags, but they're not cheap either. So they are better than these type of bags, which is uh, the this is the aftermarket type, made by Electro Parts, widely available. Buy dust bags again, they sell these. They're a lot, lot cheaper, only a few pounds to buy. You get five pack, five in there, but they are paper bags. Okay, I haven't used any of these in this in this machine yet, but they looks like two layer, uh, two layer paper bags, and they will be E82. Notice they're not ES, but just E82 type, like so. So again, um, with the bags cleaner, it's not quite as easy now to get bags for them as it used to be. Because, you know, you used to be able to walk into a uh, supermarket. You used to have a back, back repair shop on the corner, you know, you used to go and get your bags and belts from. But uh, now, they've all but died out. With the advent of these cleaners coming in, that we call cheap throwaway plastic bags, it has done enormous damage to the independent traders that used to have a little shop on the high street that you used to take your uh, cleaner to and they'd uh, service and repair it for you. And now people just can't be bothered. They'll buy one of these for 60 quid, use it till it don't work anymore, or even in some cases use it till the belt goes in the front there and throw it away. You know, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons that I got this for cheap, because she was selling it because she'd broken the drive belt. That's the, that was really the only thing that was wrong with it. People just don't read that they don't understand now on these modern cleaners how you take them to pieces to replace the, the belts or even where you get the belts from. Because, like I say, the shops on the high street have closed down. So where are you supposed to take them? 
you know, if if you're an old an old age pensioner, you haven't got the internet, like the rest of us order our parts from. What are they supposed to do? You know, it's a very sad state of affairs that people have to throw these away just because a drive belt breaks. But there we go. That's the bag. Uh, what else do we have on here? Very, very simple cleaner. It doesn't have that many features. As I say, it is a budget machine. Uh, what else? There's your uh, recline pedal there. It's very easy to recline. Unlike the Pure Power, where it, where it has a very stiff knob here, this is a very easy button to press. I could press it with one finger, and it reclines back, like so. Press it again, and it'll go, well, it's supposed to go flat to the floor, but it's a little bit stiff to do that, but it will. That's the first one there, so that you can lift it up over rugs and tassels, or going over thresholds, like so. So there, that's very easy to operate. The two wheels here. The pipe there. That's see-through, so you can see if there's any blockages in there. That's the pipe that leads to the floor head. That's where your hose disconnects there. That comes off nice and easily, so you can clear blockages quite easily. Right, what do we have underneath? Let's have a look at the bottom. Now, underneath here, that's polypropylene, that is. That's not ABS. I'm, I'm pretty sure that isn't. It's, it's ABS on the hood, the polypropylene underneath, where it really matters. This, this part here, the underneath, is what you don't want to be brittle and cracking all the time. And uh, now I've used this cleaner upstairs a lot, so you'll see in here how, how dirty that is. This is actually a very good brush roll on this machine. I don't know whether or not I can just uh, pull that down. I know this, the, wind, the light from the window tends to reflect on here. Now I've noticed that on these. So I apologise if that's the case. Uh, you've got here, like I say, good, good stiff bristles on there. You know, the, they're not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a perfect brush roll, but it's not a bad brush roll. It, you know, it does its job. You can really hear it beating on the carpet when I'm using it upstairs. And it really does. Get the fine dust, talc and powder, everything. You can see that on there. What that'll bring out. I use this on the mattress as well, on my bed. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's uh, that's what I do. I vacuum clean the bed with this cleaner. Get all the dust out. Very good. The belt, I believe, on this. There's a screw here and a screw here. And there is also another two screws. One there and one there. That'll enable you that'll enable you then to lift the hood off. On the belt you'll see it's stretched from here to here. So you'd lift the brush roller from the top. It's, it's one of these cleaners where you have to remove the top, where you have to remove the hood, rather than remove the sole plate to get access to the belt on here. There's your undercarriage there, which is the height adjuster. Um, yeah, very very basic. Not a lot to say on the underneath of there. Very functional cleaner. So, oh, let's plug it in, give it a push round, and hear what it sounds like. has what I would call, um, I'll call it a screamer motor, it's, it's fairly loud this cleaner when you turn it on. There's not a lot of sound insulation in the bottom there. As I say, it's only a very budget one. It's, um, here we go.
So yeah, it's not the quietest machine on the market, this one. It's, uh, I'd say, um, yeah. It's when you put the, you put the tools on, I notice the noise really increases because it's got such a powerful suction on here. When you put in limiting items like this on the end, and yeah, this does fit, believe it or not, on the end of there. So that it does act as an extension rod, but you're always pulling it through the crevice tool. So it will fit in the end of here, and it will fit on the end of there, that dusting brush. And it's actually not a bad dusting brush for the money. And also, because it's so light, because the hose is rather short, all you need to do is just pick the cleaner up like that and carry it around as you're doing it. You know, as long as you don't get that coat hose kink here, it will do a good job. But it's not, as I say, it's not as good as the pure power in terms of the hose. With this machine, you've got to be aware of its limitations because, it's like I say, you're not paying a lot for it, so you know you, you get what you pay for. But it's not a bad machine for the money. And uh, as far as rating this machine, for a 60, 70 pound machine, with the fact the hose isn't brilliant, it's not, it's not, it's not the, uh, the quietest of machines, but it does a really good job of bringing the pile up on here. I always like, to, as I say, to push it round from this direction, then across that direction, and you can see the pile and how that brush roll brings it up really nicely. So, for a bagged upright in its price range, with the limitations it has, I would give this machine 80%. I'd give it 8 out of 10. It could be better, but for the money, I'd recommend it. I'd recommend this to my mother. I, I would, because it's light, it's easy to use. It is so easy to push it along. It's not like some of these really heavy cleaners where you've got to have great big arm muscles to struggle across the carpet with it. Because that's set on second, second to lowest setting there. And that really does, you know, it will clean and it will be easy to push as well. And those two factors are, are really important. It's no good being easy to push and then it doesn't do anything. Because we can, we, we can all do that by just turning that selector there onto the highest setting. It's easy to push along and then it's not doing anything. You want to make sure you know, that it's easy to push and it's also picking up as well. So, you know, I, I think this is a really good, really good machine for the money, this one. And uh, you can say, you can still buy these on eBay. You still get them from Tesco's, I think. You can still get them from uh, Co-op. Co-op Electrical, and uh, as there's an OC brand, of course, I don't think they use the Electrolux brand anymore now. This It's either AEG for the more upmarket ones, or there's an OC brand for the budget brands. Again, same with the cylinder cleaners. There's an But yeah, that's a great little cleaner, that is, for the money. And um, please have that one in my collection. So, until next time, from me and the Electrolux Powerlight Pet, I'll say goodbye for now.